toys. Boring. How am I supposed to play with these pieces of plastic if they don't even unlock content in a video game, even though all of that content is already in the game and could easily be included for no extra cost, but it's not because of a funny gimmick idea? <gasps> That's right, today we're talking about everyone's favorite waste of money, Toys to Life games. You see, back when these games hit it big in the 2010s, I was right in that target market for this stuff and I ate it up. I own all the Skylanders games, two out of the three Disney Infinity games, Lego Dimensions, and I've got a whole bunch of plastic figures to go along with them. But you see, whenever I hear people talking about these games nowadays, I always feel like it's either people saying how amazing they are, or how awful they are. So today, I wanted to finally take a big look back at what I consider to be the three biggest Toys to Life series to see whether these games are as good as I remember them being as a kid, or if I wasted my childhood wondering how the plastic dragon got into the TV. So the first big Toys to Life game released was none other than Skylanders Spyro's Adventure. This game is technically a reboot of the Spyro the Dragon series, but I honestly don't really see it that way. While yes, the game does feature Spyro in the name and as a playable character, the game itself is completely different from other Spyro games, and in reality, he plays almost no role within the plot. Using his name was probably more of a way to market to older Spyro fans and ensure that this game wasn't a complete failure. But as we all know by this point, this game was anything but a complete failure. This game not only launched a whole series, but also a whole genre of games that would be extremely popular for the next few years. With all that being said, a game this popular has to be pretty good, and I remember enjoying it quite a bit as a kid. So after finally playing the game again, eh, eh, Eh. Don't get me wrong, this game isn't bad and does what it sets out to do very well. The world this game is set in is visually very nice and leaves a lot of room to introduce new ideas to keep things interesting. The story, while nothing special really, has some fun characters like the main antagonist Chaos or the guy who's literally voiced by Joe from Family Guy. Hey down there! Name's Flynn. The game had some jokes that I genuinely thought were kinda funny and the whole game just has a certain charm to it. To be fair, that charm could just be me feeling nostalgic, but we're just gonna act like that's not what it is. You play as whatever character you happen to have placed on your portal, and there are a lot of different characters that could be. What's impressive about this is that they all have their own unique move sets and abilities, making a lot of these characters feel completely unique from each other. Even their designs are all extremely unique and completely original aside from Spyro, of course. But the problem with having such a large and unique cast of characters is that now you have to find a gameplay style that is able to account for all that while still giving everyone a similar experience no matter what figures they have. This then causes the gameplay to become extremely simple with you just spamming the same two or three attacks over and over again. There's no real complexity to the gameplay here, and I often found myself getting very bored while playing this game. I don't want to list this as a complete negative though, because I think this kind of gameplay was good to have for me as a kid. When I was younger, I just wasn't really that good at games. That part of my brain hadn't really developed yet but this game gave me a kind of game that I could beat because I didn't have to be good at it. While I still definitely think it could have been done a little bit better to make it more interesting, it's still okay that this is a kid's game. Not every piece of media has to appeal to everyone, and I think it's fine to say that I've probably just outgrown this game, but the game does still have some problems that are still pretty prominent even when looking at this through the lens of it being a kid's game. Obviously, there's the whole thing of having to buy literally every character if you want to play as them. This in itself isn't a huge negative to me because it's just sort of part of the genre and the game would honestly be much less interesting without that gimmick. My problems start coming in when the game locks you out of certain parts of a level because you don't have the right element Skylander and other stuff that is just trying to constantly get you to buy new toys. I think the fact that all of these characters play uniquely and come with a pretty well-made toy makes these marketable enough on their own and you don't really need all of this other annoying crap to try and get you to buy more. It's especially annoying because if for some reason you wanted to 100% this game, you would need to shell out a decent amount of money for all the figures you would need. Overall, I think that this is a fine game and a pretty good kids game, but it definitely leaves room for a lot of improvement. Like in this level where you- oh, oh, okay, I guess it's time to move on. Right off the success of Spyro's Adventure, it was time to make the next game only one year after the first. You know Activision just needed another yearly franchise to add to the pile. But the big question is, does this game actually improve upon the last one? <laughs> no. So for better or for worse, this is basically the same game, but we have some big guys now. As a kid, Giants made the price of admission worth it to me, but now looking at them, they are just bigger Skylanders that move slower, making them almost more annoying to play as. All of the parts that you need a Giant for are pretty much all optional, and to be completely honest, they feel extremely forced. It doesn't feel like they made the Giants because they had this really cool idea that they wanted to put in the game, 
but rather they had less than a year to come up with a new gimmick and give it an actual use. I will say, though, that the designs of the giants themselves I actually quite like. Like, come on, man, look at Tree Rex. He looks cool. The story is once again nothing all that special. It's kind of the same thing, except there's something about like really old robots trying to take over the world. The opening cutscene is actually pretty fun as it shows Chaos having been turned into a toy and transported into some random Walmart like the Skylanders in the first game. This game isn't really bad, but that's just because it's so similar to the first one. Because of that, it has all of the positives that the game had, but it also has the same negatives. It's great if you just want more of the first game, but if you wanted the series to actually improve at all, yeah, this doesn't really do that. And in case you're curious, this game also crashed while I was recording. So after Skylanders was shown to be successful with the first two games, a certain company caught wind of this whole Toys to Life thing and said, we want money too. And so Disney Infinity was born and set out to be Skylander's first major competitor. Now, like I said at the beginning, I only own two out of the three Disney Infinity games, but I did a little research and that doesn't really matter very much because these are basically just three versions of the exact same game. You've got Disney Infinity, Disney Infinity 2.0, and Disney Infinity 3.0. I only own 2.0 and 3.0, but from what I can tell, besides having access to new characters and stuff, there aren't that many other differences. So what I did was just play a little bit of the ones I have and just kind of combine them into one section of the video. So these games are meant to be a big Disney crossover with your normal Disney characters and then even Marvel and Star Wars in later entries. This at first sounds pretty cool. I mean, having one big game where all your favorite Disney associated characters are interacting, doing all sorts of cool stuff together is a great idea. But turns out that's not what this game is at all. In all reality, there is no plot or real story mode to these games, but instead we have the toy box and level packs that you can go buy at the store. The level packs are probably my first big problem with the game because instead of just locking characters behind toys, we are now locking the actual main content of the game behind toys. On top of this, you can only use certain characters within these levels. Like, I can't use non-Avengers characters in the Avengers level. They are really strict about this too. Like, I can't even use Spider-Man in the Avengers level. I'm pretty sure he's one of them. All of this just sort of defeats the point of this being a crossover game, since you can't really have these characters cross over in any meaningful way. This would all be fine if there was some sort of main campaign that you could go through, but there isn't, so you have to rely on these level packs to give the game any sort of meat to it. Now, to be fair, you do have the toy box, but that's content that you have to basically make yourself, and not everyone is really into that kind of stuff. You also start out without much to work with in the toy box, and no real direction on how to get more, which ends up making this part of the game feel even more empty. There is some pre-made stuff in this part of the game, but none of it is really all that fun. And I couldn't even get to some of it because my game keeps freezing on the loading screen. To be fair, that's probably because I was playing the Wii U versions, but on that note, man, the Wii U versions do not run well at all. These games move so slow on this console, and I'm sure other versions are better, but that doesn't fix this. I don't really know what else to say because I'm not really sure what these games are trying to do. There is a lot of stuff you can do here, but none of it is all that great or in-depth. The game just sort of lacks any kind of focus, and I remember this being a much larger problem when I was a kid because I just couldn't really figure out what to do with these games. I liked them because I could play as Spider-Man and Yoda, but I had no goal and just ended up wandering around pointlessly most of the time. I'm sure that there's something here that people enjoy, but I just can't really get into these games. But you see, while Disney was releasing these games, it's not like Skylanders died out. In fact, they were still pumping these suckers out just as fast as before. During the three years that Disney released their three games, Skylanders released three of their own, with the first being Skylanders Swap Force. The first notable thing about this game is that it was actually developed by a different studio this time. Instead of Toys for Bob, who developed the last two, this game was handled by another Activision studio, Vicarious Visions. Now, this is actually a really good sign. Instead of working one single team to death year after year, we now have two teams who can spend longer on these games so they can make more improvements and add more interesting gimmicks than a game like Giants did. So, with all of this in mind, how does Skylander Swap Force hold up? Well, to start off, we have gotten a pretty major upgrade in the visuals here. The last two games had to run on the Wii, and so their visuals were pretty limited, but now they have that extra power available on the Wii U. Honestly though, the game does look a lot better than the previous two entries, and I think that this was a huge improvement. But even crazier than all that, you can jump now. 
Yeah, so I kind of forgot to mention that, but in the last two games, you just couldn't jump. It was a really weird decision, especially since the series started out as a spin-off of a platformer, but you know, whatever. But now jumping is here, and I mean, yeah, you can jump. This definitely allowed them to make the levels a little more interesting since you could add a tiny bit more verticality without having to spam jump pads everywhere. There are also tiny bits of platforming here and there, nothing really that crazy, but I guess it's nice to have. But the biggest addition we have here is the main gimmick of the game, the Swap Force. These are a special type of Skylander that allow you to rip their legs off and reattach them to someone else. Compared to the Giants in the last game, this is just so much more interesting and genuinely pretty cool. Getting to take apart your Skylander and make your favorite combination is genuinely really fun. Like, come on, Wrecking Ball? Who cares about him? Now, Trap Buckler, on the other hand, I made him. He's like my son. The swap gimmick allows you to mix elements, which is pretty cool, but the different bases also have different abilities, which allow you to unlock extra mini games. Like, the Squid Legs let you climb a big wall and the drill lets you go into caves and stuff. These little mini games act as nice little bonuses for having the different types of Swap Force Skylanders, but also give a nice change of pace every once in a while, which is especially useful for this game because these levels are long. The last two games definitely had decently sized levels, but I don't know if I was just going slower or what, but I felt like these levels lasted ages. I tried to record only about an hour and a half to two hours of gameplay footage for each of these games, and in the others, I got through a good handful of levels in that time, but in this one, I through like two. This isn't awful, but with how little the gameplay changes up in these games, I think it's better to have it in short spurts. This isn't a huge deal though, because this is definitely the best game I've played so far in this video, so good job Swap Force. You didn't crash like every other game before you has. The next Skylanders game to be released after Swap Force would be Toys for Bob's big return to the series with Skylanders Trap Team. Now this game is where I feel the series really starts to see some major improvement. Don't get me wrong, Swap Force was also an improvement, but that game still had a lot of issues. The game looked better and played better, but the levels were very long and the game could get very repetitive very fast. In Trap Team, I think they have really started to refine what makes these games work and what doesn't. The levels are much better paced, the combat is starting to get much more interesting, and then on top of that, this game has a really cool gimmick. So instead of just having a new type of Skylander, like in the last two with the Swap Force and Giants, we now have these Trap Crystals. Basically, how these work is whenever you defeat one of the bosses in the game, if you have the Trap Crystal of the same element as them, you can trap them in it and play as them in the game. On its own, this idea is pretty fun, but I think it's more the execution that makes it really work. I'm not even going to really try and describe it, just watch this clip really quick. It's not some crazy, mind-blowing effect, but it's just enough to show you that they were willing to go an extra mile and try to really make it seem like these crystals are actually trapping your enemies and that they are not just pieces of molded plastic. The bosses themselves have also seen a huge improvement in this game, and some of them can be a little challenging on the harder difficulties. We also have the Trap Master Skylanders that have these crystal weapons and deal a lot more damage to bosses than normal Skylanders. My only problem with them is that the elemental gates that used to be able to be opened by any Skylander can now only be opened by Trap Masters of that element, meaning that a good chunk of your collection just lost a whole lot of use in this game. I mean, I get why they did it, since they want people to actually buy the new Skylanders instead of just constantly reusing their old ones, but I don't think it worked since I only have two Trap Masters and one of them came with the game. But other than that one problem, honestly, this is a pretty solid game. Obviously, it's still a Toys to Life Skylanders game, and some people just aren't really into that, but as far as these games go, this one is pretty good. As mentioned earlier, these levels are much shorter than in Swap Force, but on top of that, they are much more enjoyable than like most of the levels in the last three games. Not really a whole lot more to say about this one other than I liked it, and it was a pretty big improvement over the last one. With the last few Skylanders games, you can really see them trying to improve this series. The games aren't perfect, but it's clear that the teams working on them were trying their best to make these games as fun as they can be. Each game has been improving upon the last one, and that's something that is really nice to see in a series that could have easily just been a quick soulless cash grab. You know, it's a cash grab with soul. But that brings us to the next entry in the series, Skylanders Superchargers. Now this game aims to mix things up quite a bit from the usual with the addition of vehicles. On paper, this is literally a perfect concept because most toys that kids have are some sort of car or other vehicle, so making those sorts of toys and then giving them an in-game function is a cool idea. So the game itself overall plays a lot like the last one. 
Obviously, we don't have the trap gimmick anymore, but pretty much all of the other positives carry over into this one. But since we now have the vehicles, every level now has a land, air, and sea section for you to use said vehicles. I honestly think that these act as a pretty fun way to change up the Skylanders gameplay. You know, Skylanders is mostly just walking around and beating up enemies, but now we have these new sections that add a little more excitement into the mix. The car sections are probably my favorite because they control well and they add a little bit of fast paced action to a series that does not usually have that. The water sections are fun enough, they kind of switch up how they play depending on what you're doing, but overall they're pretty fun. Then we have the plane sections, I don't really like the plane sections. When you are on a straightforward path, these can be kind of fun, but when you're just in a big, wide open area, they are really boring because of how slowly you move. The more Skylanders games I play, the less I have to say about them. I would say this one's about on par, if not a little bit worse than Trap Team. I will say that I played this one a lot longer than I did the others, and I think that's because of the vehicle sections, so I guess that's a pretty big positive towards this one. Oh yeah, and I almost forgot to mention that they added Bowser and Donkey Kong to this game. You've probably seen it in the footage already, and I think this is a fun crossover. I gotta say, on top of it just being cool that they are here, these are probably some of my favorite characters to play as. Their moves feel pretty natural to use, and they both have transformations they can do to switch things up a bit. I wouldn't really call this game an improvement over the last one, but I think it's still pretty fun. While Activision and Disney were busy releasing Skylander Superchargers and Disney Infinity 3.0, a new competitor was about to make a pretty big splash. This new entry in the Toys to Life genre was none other than LEGO Dimensions. I gotta say, this is probably one of the most no-brainer good ideas ever. I mean, you got a company that specializes in plastic toys and just so happens to have a very popular series of games that are based off of their products, and then a new genre of game comes around that encourages you to buy said toys along with the game. Honestly, LEGO probably could have been really lazy with this game and it probably would have worked out for them no matter what. But instead, they decided to do something really cool with this game. One thing that makes LEGO appealing to a lot of people is the sheer variety of all the themes they have. You know, we got the original stuff, but also tons of themes based on existing and very popular properties. This is something that is also reflected in the LEGO games with games like LEGO Star Wars or LEGO Batman. And what this game aims to do is give one giant crossover between a bunch of different properties in the form of a LEGO game. We have stuff that is well established in the LEGO brand like Batman and Lord of the Rings, but then also stuff that never got LEGO sets or anything before this game like Portal, Doctor Who, and even this stupid blue rat. This would be cool enough as a normal LEGO game, but then making it toys to life means that we get LEGO figures and small builds for all of the series represented here. This is pretty awesome, especially for a series like Portal that probably won't be getting any LEGO sets anytime soon. Now, as far as the actual game goes, it's a LEGO game. Obviously, there are some differences, like how you don't really unlock characters anymore, you just buy them at Walmart, but other than that, this game stays true to the LEGO game formula, which I think heavily works in its favor. The other two series we have talked about in this video have had the problem with trying to make a completely new series or even type of game on top of also trying to do all the Toys to Life stuff. LEGO Dimensions, on the other hand, is working in well-traversed territory, meaning that they can focus more on making the game actually fun. The levels are very standard LEGO game stuff, but I think it's the level theming that makes it pretty interesting. The levels are based on all sorts of different properties, allowing for a lot of variety on its own. But then on top of that, we have characters from other series crossing over into the levels, which makes them much more interesting. Like we have Lord Business and all of his robots from the LEGO movie attacking Springfield. Lex Luthor not really doing all that much in the Ninjago level and other stuff like that. Obviously, within these levels, we have a lot of stuff locked behind certain characters, which is kind of annoying, but there's really no point in complaining about it because that just comes with this type of game. This game also really likes you moving your characters around on the portal, like almost every puzzle in the game will involve you swapping around the figures. I don't really mind this, and I think some of the stuff that uses this gimmick is done really well, but I could see how this could be annoying to some, especially if you don't have the portal right next to you. LEGO Dimensions is a really good LEGO game, and on top of that, probably the best Toys to Life game. The only thing that kinda makes me sad is that they couldn't have any Star Wars stuff in the game. I get that Disney was probably completely against that idea since they just launched their own Toys to Life game with a focus on Star Wars stuff, but this game probably wouldn't exist if it weren't for the LEGO Star Wars games, so it just sucks that they couldn't be a part of it. So let's set the stage for our final game here. By the time that this game came out, Disney had dropped out of the Toys to Life market, choosing not to do anything else after Disney Infinity 3.0. LEGO Dimensions did well, and they were still making some new stuff for it, but they weren't planning on doing anything else after it. 
and superchargers didn't meet sales expectations according to Activision. By all means, Toys to Life was on its way out by the time 2016 rolled around. But Activision still had one more game in the works with Skylanders Imaginators. This game's whole gimmick was creating your own Skylanders, which is honestly a really fun idea. If you want to increase people's enjoyment of a game, just put in a stupid character creator. Everybody loves that crap. They actually did a really good job with the character creator here. You have tons of options to choose from, and you can really make either your dream Skylander or a little abomination. I made a little goblin guy. His name is Goblo. I like fire. The only thing I don't really like about the Imaginators is the actual toy that you use to access them. I obviously get that they couldn't make your custom Skylander into a toy, but I feel like they could have done better than this. It's a little crystal in a weird looking container. I think something along the lines of how the trap crystals look would have worked better, uh, but overall this is a pretty small complaint. We also have Sensei Skylanders, which are basically just normal Skylanders, except they can help your Imaginators learn new abilities and up their max level. One pretty big addition to this game is we now have a hub world in between the levels, which I really like. It gives more opportunities for secrets and makes the whole world feel a lot more connected. The levels themselves are actually really good. We have a lot of enemy variety. The bosses are probably the best they've been. The game can genuinely be challenging on the harder difficulties, and we even have some pretty well-made platforming sections. By all means, this is probably the best Skylanders game ever made, which kind of makes it sad that this was the last one ever made. I don't think that this game was better than LEGO Dimensions, but it honestly probably comes in as my second favorite Toys to Life game, and hey, that's pretty impressive when you're going up against the game with two LEGO Chris Pratts. This game was not only the last Skylanders game, but to me acted as sort of the finale to Toys to Life as a genre. Sure, there was some stuff after it, and Amiibo is still going pretty strong, but none of the other attempts like Starlink really did well, and Amiibo is just honestly its own thing. I don't think people even buy Amiibo for their in-game function anymore. The appeal is more that they are just nice figures. It's sad that this genre had to go out like this with no one really caring, but honestly, of all games, I think Imaginators was a good game to go out on. So those were all the stupid toy, stupid baby games that I wanted to talk about today. And I gotta say, a lot of these games were better than I thought they would be. Don't get me wrong, some of these games were still, uh, not, not good. But overall, I had a lot more fun than I thought I would, with games like LEGO Dimensions and Skylanders Imaginators being pretty good times. Anybody know what I should do with these things now?